Today I want to share with you the books that led me to love and follow Stoicism. It is a philosophy that I've been following for 10 years now and I'm trying every day to implement it in my life. If you're watching this video then most probably you also want to learn more about Stoicism to apply it in your own life. And in my opinion the best way to do so is to start by reading the Stoic themselves. In other words, start by reading the ancient primary texts of Stoicism. It will help you get a better grasp of the core notions of Stoicism and the moral context surrounding its creation. You also have other alternatives such as watching YouTube videos or reading modern introductions about Stoicism, but I feel that this should be a secondary approach. So if you're hesitating and you don't know where to start, don't worry, I got you in this video. So in this video, I will give you the exact order of books to read according to my experience to ensure a smooth introduction and not overwhelm you with a lot of information at once. Hopefully, if you follow this order, you will make the most out of your readings and you will fall in love with Stoicism just as I did 10 years ago. As you may know, uh, Stoicism was founded by Zeno of Citium in Athens in the early 3rd century BC. If you want to learn more about Zeno, the founder of Stoicism, you can pick a very old book called The Lives of the Eminent Philosophers. It's a short biography book about different philosophers from the Greek world, but unfortunately you won't be able to read his writings, the first Stoic texts, because none of them survived. So apart from the founder Zeno of Citium, the three most famous philosophers are Seneca, Marcus Aurelius and Epictetus. The first book or essay I recommend you to read is On the Shortness of Life, written by Seneca. Seneca is Rome's most famous playwright and also he's a political advisor and one of Rome's richest men. He's a fantastic philosopher that had a turbulent life that started with illness and then exile and ended with execution. So in my personal opinion, Seneca is the most readable and accessible stoic of the three most famous ones. And that is due to his style of writing. When you read Seneca, you feel that he's directly talking to you and he manages to paint a very good picture, a very vivid picture uh, whenever he's making an argument for something. So he's really convincing. I find that he's the most convincing of the Stoics. And I think that is due to a very interesting fact. Uh, all his essays or most of his essays were dedicated to his friend Lucilius. So since he's writing a letter to his friend, you feel as though he's talking directly to you, giving you personal advice from his own experience uh, about different topics and about a lot of topics in life in general. So that's what makes him very interesting and makes him always hit straight to the point, hit home with his messages. What's funny about this is that a lot of scholars say that these are essays in disguise and that Seneca never even had a friend called Lucilius because there are no traces of any answers from Lucilius and the style of writing was made to be published instead of just read by a friend. In his essay, Seneca stresses the importance of valuing our time and to avoid wasting it at all costs. He argues, and rightly so, that time is our most important asset. In guarding their fortune, men are often close-fisted. Yet, when it comes to the matter of wasting time, in the case of the one thing in which it is right to be miserly, they show themselves most extravagant. Seneca speaks a lot about the idea of not wasting our time, putting our priorities in order, and really giving value to every minute of our day. He doesn't say it from the perspective of being overly productive or always robotic, always working. He says it more from the idea of protecting our time, knowing its value, and only engaging in activities that will bring us value or enrich our lives in any aspect. Being lazy, following meaningless pursuits, and engaging in vain conversations. This is what he calls wasting time. For me, this idea was extremely beneficial and impactful in my life because it created a sense of urgency in my life. For example, there were a lot of things that I wanted to do, but I was pushing away for a really long time. And, and that sense of urgency made me take action immediately and started doing things like creating this channel, uh, taking care of my health and getting closer to my family. I think these are really important things that I was always thinking, it's not the time now, like I'll do them later on or when I have more time in my life, but I really took the decision and I understood really the concept that time is, is not necessarily in my control and that I should just live in the present moment, do as much as possible because today, might be the last day 
and I, I know it's a bit of a grim idea to think about, but when taken from a positive perspective, I think it is a really important notion to understand because it will help you accomplish a lot in your life. I'm suggesting this essay as a start because I consider it as a warm up reading. It will get you slowly introduced to the key concepts of stoicism without overwhelming you with too much information. So the second book I really recommend is Letters from a Stoic, also written by Seneca, which he wrote towards the end of his life. So Letters from a Stoic is a collection of 124 letters written to his friend Lucilius, advising him on how to become a better person and a better Stoic. It is an invaluable and timeless guide on how to live a virtuous and a fulfilling life. A recurrent theme in these letters is about temperance and self-discipline and the idea of being content with what we have and not always wanting more. Seneca says, philosophy calls for simple living, not for doing penance. And the simple way of life need not be a crude one. Seneca argues that we should be reasonable, do everything in moderation, and avoid living in excess at all costs. This advice is timeless and is even more true today in our modern materialistic society. There is a beautiful minimalistic notion in his idea that deeply resonates with me because I'm convinced that sometimes, in fact, less is more. Fewer possessions, fewer worries to take care of them, more free time, more mental space. For me, this is true freedom. We should strive to be healthy, have comfortable homes and live comfortable lives, focusing on the utility of things and not their perceived image. If we're never satisfied with what we have, we will always want more and will never be happy. And that will simply make us slaves to our possessions. Again, this is just one topic from all the letters that deeply resonated with me on a personal level. So I thought to share it with you, but it is a really fantastic book that I really recommend you to read because it targets a lot more topics and themes. And I'm sure you will definitely learn at least one thing from reading it. So the third Stoic book I want to share with you is Meditations by Marcus Aurelius. Marcus Aurelius was the Roman emperor at the time when he wrote this book. And to this day, he's still considered as one of the best, most exemplary leaders in history. Niccolo Machiavelli considers the time of rule under Marcus a golden time. And he considers him as the last of the five good emperors. He wrote Meditations as a form of journaling to remind himself of his Stoic values and his moral standards. What makes it special is that these words are from the most powerful man at the time, and he was advising himself on how to be a good person, a good leader, and honor the position he was given. This form of writing makes it perfectly readable and accessible for everyone looking to learn about Stoicism. I believe anyone who reads Meditations will learn something valuable from it. No doubt about that. The only reason I didn't recommend Meditations as the first book to read as an introduction to Stoicism is that Marcus Aurelius is already a convinced Stoic and his writings were more to remind himself than to prove a point. So he doesn't necessarily go into the arguments, doesn't necessarily explain why, but just states the facts or states the ideas. So for a beginner, it wouldn't necessarily be the best book to start, but then once you read Seneca and you have an idea of the core values of Stoicism, it is really important to read Marcus Aurelius because his writings are very practical. So just to give you a glimpse about the topics in the book, he talks a lot about nature and the nature of change, that everything around us and even our lives are subject to change and that we should embrace it because just that what nature does. For Marcus, change is the nature of our universe and adversity and death are just part of nature. He says, think not disdainfully of death, but look on it with favor, for even death is one of the things that nature wills. He argues that everything happens according to nature the good and the bad, so it would be unwise for us to resist events or complain about them. He regards every event and every obstacle as the best possible outcome. He welcomes everything with calmness and composure, and refuses to give it any significance. He says, nothing is evil which is according to nature. This book was my first encounter with Stoicism. It sparked a passion within me for this philosophy and made me eager to read and study all the other Stoics as well. In my opinion, this book is really a masterpiece and every time I read it, I retain and gain new insights and always learn something new. So once you finish reading Seneca and Marcus Aurelius, I suggest you finish your Stoic discovery mission 
by reading Epictetus in Chiridion, which is also called the guidebook. It is simply a collection of all Epictetus writings and it contains all the core elements and fundamentals of his philosophy. I recommend the edition translated by Robin Waterfield because it's a book that contains all Epictetus writings. It's the complete work of Epictetus. So once you finish with the Enchiridion, which is not very long, you can continue with discourses and fragments, which are also other Epictetus writings and teachings gathered by his students at the time. When you read Epictetus' writings, you really feel the idea that he was giving a lectures to students, and his objective was to make the lecture as practical as possible. But even though he was lecturing students, I feel like his ideas were the hardest to understand out of the other Stoics. So that's why I recommended you reading Epictetus as the last one, so you already are familiar with all the Stoic notions and concepts, and then go to the person that applies them the best. The core of Epictetus' teaching would be the idea of the dichotomy of control, that we should exclusively direct our attention and energy to what's in our control and completely ignore the rest. This mindset shift gives us complete control over our lives and rids us of any anxieties related to the future or the external world. Epictetus also urges us to change completely our perspective on events. He says that every situation has two handles, the positive one and the negative one, and it is completely up to us how we regard these events. So one way would be to focus on the negative aspect of the event and become upset or angry. The other way would be to focus on the positive aspect of the event and find a way to deal with it or find any advantage in the adversity. It's not about being delusional, but about choosing the positive path. Personally, my favorite quote of Epictetus is simple but really profound. He says, don't explain your philosophy, embody it. He's telling us here not to brag and not to tell people that we're reading Seneca or reading Epictetus or that we're following the Stoic philosophy. The objective here is to show them that you're following this philosophy. Adapt it in your day-to-day -day behavior, lead by example, and show people your real actions, not simply your words. By doing this, you will regard every event in your life as an opportunity to show the world and yourself the application of your philosophy. I believe Stoicism is adapted and valuable for everyone. And if you take a moment and look at the three philosophers we mentioned today, Seneca, Marcus Aurelius and Epictetus, you'll notice that they all come from completely different backgrounds and had completely different lives. And regardless of these differences, one thing is in common between them is that Stoicism helped them all equally. And I'm sure it can help you too. I guarantee you it will completely change your life, improve your mindset, and it will give you a daily guide to follow. Like Tim Ferriss describes, Stoicism is a no-nonsense system designed to produce dramatic real-world effects. Think of it as an ideal operating system for thriving in high-stress environments. To make the most from Stoicism, you only need two things an intention to change and to become a better person. Thank you for watching.